So over the past three weeks, I've made a couple of different videos on different palette swapping strategies in Game Maker. Uh, firstly, we've got what I like to call the iterative search palette swap, in which we're going to take an input uh, palette on a texture on a sprite, and we're going to iterate over it. And if uh, the color of what we're currently drawing matches the color on the palette texture, then we can just replace it with something else. This is fine in small doses if you've just got a sprite with a couple of different colors in it. But you will quickly find that if you have a sprite with a lot of different colors in it, or if you're trying to palette swap a lot of things in your game at the same time, then the performance of this uh, iterating over the palette texture in the shader, in the fragment shader, is going to uh, quickly become a bit of a performance problem. Although it does have the advantage that you can drop it into an existing project and pretty much immediately have a palette swapping effect. Uh, we also discussed index color, and while this isn't exactly the same as how index color would have worked in... Uh, for example, the 8 and 16 bit video game consoles, it is pretty similar. We're going to just uh, take the color that we sampled from a texture, we're going to use that as the input into the palette texture, use that as an index in the array or an index on the texture, and we're going to use that as our final color. This is obviously going to be much faster than the iterative search because it's doing almost no work in the fragment shader, and instead it's going to pre-process all of the graphics in your game and uh, turn them into a palette and an index sprite. Uh, with, of course, the obvious downside that you have to do that for every sprite in your game. And also that when you, if you try to like open the Game Maker Room Editor, uh, you will end up with something like this. And this is not exactly the easiest thing to make a, uh, to make a level in when everything is black and white like this. So it's a bit of a trade-off. And we also discussed a little project of Juju Adams known as Color Mod, which attempts to merge these two strategies in the middle. Um, it will uh, do some pre-processing of the sprites like when the game starts. And then it will do some math tricks to map the colors in existing RGB color sprites to the um, uh, to the index that it creates. Uh, Juju has actually done a couple of updates to this since I made that video, uh, which is nice. One, he added this lovely little uh, compare and contrast table uh, with the different methods of palette swapping in the README. Uh, and this is going to basically explain what I'm going to show you in this video. And he also did an update to the... Um, to the system. A number of people took issue with the fact that you couldn't just like drop in a palette sprite uh, and use that as your palette into the original version of color mod and you instead had to like give it an array of RGB color values which is a uh, perhaps not the most user-friendly way to uh, to do this. And uh, we now have color mod from sprite which is a function which will basically uh, do all that for you if you give it a, uh, a palette sprite. So that's that's nice. Uh, I would recommend if you haven't done so already going and, and updating your color mod system to 1.2.1 or whatever the current version as of you're watching this video is so that you can actually like use that. Anyway, I've said informally in the past that I expect that the like the performance rankings for these three palette swapping strategies would be index color first because it's doing like next to nothing in the um in the fragment shader. Uh, we would have color mod coming in at a close second. Uh, because if we go into the fragment shader of that, it's doing a little bit more work. Um, it's hard to empirically judge the performance of a shader just based on how much like stuff it's doing in the fragment shader because, um, among other things, the shader compiler could or could not choose on its own to make some uh, further optimizations, especially when it comes to things like vector multiplication and uh, addition and things that GPUs are good at. But um, just looking at the amount of code in the fragment shader, you might expect the... Uh, color mod to come in a close second behind index color, and uh, iterative color search is something that you can probably pretty fairly expect to come in last. And exactly how far behind it comes in the, uh, compared to the other two uh, depends on how much stuff you're drawing and, again, the size of the hey. palettes. Uh, I'm going to run the very, the very familiar, at this point, uh, sample project that I have, and everything in this project is going to be drawn with palette swapping of some sort or another. And I've also set it up so that we can just flip between these three uh, methods of palette swapping and we can see what kind of an impact that has on performance. So uh, let me run this. And uh, let's see, I've uncapped the frame rate and I've also not like properly dealt to timed movement so that you can't um, like, movement is gonna be a little bit funny here. Um, ignore, the, uh, ignore the stuff being drawn on the side. That's some debug output from color mod. We can see that if we use the iterative color search when we do this, we're going to get in this location, and I'm going to try and stand in the same place while I uh, compare. We're going to get about 2200 FPS uh, with the frame rate uncapped. I am, as usual, running this on my desktop computer with a 3GB GTX 1060. Uh, you can 
compare that, like compare the, the raw computing power of the GTX 1060 of three gigabytes to whatever you have, and you can make some predictions um, of how well this will perform on your own machine, or you can just run this yourself. I'll have a link in the description of the video. Uh, if I hit tab to cycle through the, the methods of palette swapping, uh, we can uh, we can see that that's going to jump up considerably. So in this same location, our FPS has more than doubled uh, from 2200 to 4000 plus. Uh, by the way, I I caution against as always. I caution against like taking these numbers as absolute, like making blanket statements like index color is twice as fast as the iterative color search because well I don't know how many different ways I can say that it it depends on a lot of factors. Anyway, if I stand here and move over to color mod, we can see that we're going to get very similar performance uh, over like extremely long time time frames when I've just let this run on my computer and taken the average frame rates. Uh, color mod comes in probably like two to two to three percent slower than indexed uh, color when it comes to palette swapping. And again, that could be more or less of a difference on different devices that you run this on. That could be more or less depending on how many colors you have in your, your sprites palette. But in general, you can expect that color mod will be pretty close to index color, although perhaps not uh, not beating it out right. All right, so. I often say that running performance tests for uh, for game maker code and just in general isn't the most exciting thing to do on a desktop computer with a dedicated graphics card because uh, usually when you're uh, if you want to gauge the performance impact of different things it helps to use weaker devices without falling into the trap of worrying about uh, trivial micro optimizations running your code on weaker devices such as uh, single board computers such as the Raspberry Pi will make smaller differences in performance become a lot more noticeable and a lot more, uh, shall we say, visible to the eye. So to help us out, I've brought along my Raspberry Pi 4, and we're going to run this, uh, the same demo project on it. Uh, where's Ubuntu? We can, uh, we can run this on my Raspberry Pi. And if I sound a little bit different right now, um, that's, uh, that's because I'm actually sitting on the floor right now because I have not cable managed this Raspberry Pi recording setup very well today. Anyway. Uh, if we look at this, the for this very simple demo scene, the iterative search palette swapping strategy is going to give us all of eight frames per second, which is um, not a very high frame rate. And these sprites don't even have that many colors in it. And you can see the kind of impact that on low-end devices uh, the iterative color search is going to have. If I were to hit the tab key and if I were to cycle over to uh, index color instead, uh, if I'm standing here, we see that we can have instead about 70, low 70s FPS. Uh, 72 or so, which is uh, definitely much better. It's definitely not anywhere near as high as we had on the desktop computer uh, with the dedicated graphics card, but it's uh, I would consider this playable. Um, again, for this very simple demo scene with only like a couple of things happening in it, it's still definitely not high, but it's um, much better than iterative search. And if we go and swap over to the um, with color mod, it looks like we're coming in at high 50s, low 60s. So again, we're doing a little bit more math, a little bit more arithmetic. Uh, in the color mod, in the fragment shader. It's still much better than what we had with the iterative search, but uh, still not quite as good as index color. All right, I think that's enough of that. So if it comes down to the question of uh, which of these palette swapping strategies you want to use, I would probably say that you should try Juju's color mod first because it's pretty user-friendly and it doesn't require you to like set up all of the graphics in your game uh, to, uh, to have index color like sprites like this. Uh, while I personally wouldn't really be bothered by having to do this for every sprite in my game, I know that some people would. And again, uh, when you use the room editor, you probably would prefer it to not look like this if you don't have to. So um, I would recommend at least trying out color mod if you um, if you want to do palette swapping in your game. I would probably recommend not using iterative search like this. Uh, sorry, pixelated Pope. Uh, this is basically how retro palette swapper works uh, for those who don't know. But uh, color mod has all the same advantages as retro palette swapper in that you can um like you can just drop it into an existing project and have it working in a few minutes but it doesn't have the drawback of doing all this and uh, meanwhile if you really did want to go all in on palette swapping for like everything in your game in that case I probably would recommend actually using uh, the index color strategy for that because just the nature of this being simpler and having less going on here uh, makes it easier to like fine tune to your game's particular needs. It makes it easier to do certain optimizations with palettes and uh, indices and that kind of thing. It's pretty easy to tune this to the needs of your specific project. 
Uh, whereas uh, the uh, the color mod shader. Uh, where is it? Uh, if you try to mess with this, it would be it would be very easy to uh, like accidentally mess up the mathematics that's going on here and make the whole thing not work. Uh, that's just my recommendation. Uh, you can do whatever you want. This is a pretty short informal video. I'm just making this because a number of people have asked about the performance implications of doing this. So if you are one of those people, I hope this answers your question. Uh, you might notice on the color mod uh, GitHub repository that there is a um, something which I have not talked about down here, which is a lookup table. I didn't talk about this because primarily it's not really a palette swapping strategy and you wouldn't really use it for something like this. But all the same, I do want to make a video on it eventually at some point in the future because it can be used to do some other interesting things, but uh, that can be a subject for another day. Until then, my name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games. If you want the sample project, I will have a link to this down in the description of the video on GitHub, like I said. Feel free to tell me how each of these palette swapping strategies performs on your computer in a comment, and we can maybe build a little database of, um, of how this works on different GPUs down there. I like to post videos on the weird stuff you can do in Game Maker, including but not limited to a bunch of 3D stuff and a bunch of shader stuff, so if any of this appeals to you, feel free to subscribe. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute to the channel, links to that can be found in all the usual places. I hope you all enjoyed that, and I think I should go put away all this Raspberry Pi stuff around me because I would like to stop sitting on the floor because my knees are getting very sore. I will see you all later. Special thanks to Zenjamin, Vitro V, Square Crow, Spy Die Games, Manta Ray, Game Maker, Edward Holt, and DJ Gibbles for supporting these videos. If you want to contribute to the channel, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.